The last presenting company today will be Idogen, and with us we have Anders Karlsson, the CEO of the company. Welcome Anders, and uh, I leave the word to you. Thank you, Livia, and thanks for inviting me to Biostock Summit. Uh, I want to present and give you a brief introduction to Idogen today, and the agenda will be in Idogen, uh, a short introduction to our teledogenic cell therapy, the cell therapy markets as such, our indications, the key projects, but also giving an indication of what we will do the rest of the year, but also in 2022. Short introduction to the company. We are a biotech company located in Lund, founded in 2008. We have 16 employees and we are listed on the Nasdaq First North growth market. Uh, we have a young IP situation. Uh, we sent in the patent application for our new technology our upgraded uh, to tolerance inducer in December 2019 in a local application in UK, which was upgraded in December 2020 for an international PCT application. We are developing telogenic cell therapy. First development project is IDO8, uh, covering hemophilia A patients who has developed neutralizing antibodies against their important factor VIII treatment. We have an external validation. In 2017, we received the Horizon 2020 funding from which we received 2.9 million euro to cover parts of the development of the IDO8 project. We are now moving into the first in human study and expected clinical readiness end this year. We will send in the clinical, application, clinical trial application and start the study beginning of second quarter in 2022. Our financial status, we entered into the second part of 2021 with around 30 million on the bank account. We also have a subscription of the warrant number four, which gave us additional 10 millions recently. What is cell therapy? And you can easily explain that cell therapy aims to treat diseases by using cells to repair or change other cells in the body. The cells are cultured outside the body before being injected into the patient. Uh, these cells can come from the patient and they are named autologous cells or from a donor allergenic cell therapy. I want to give you a brief introduction to our, our teledogenic cell therapy and the dendritic cells plays an important role in the immune system and also how our teledogenic cell therapy works. The dendritic cells has an important role and that is to sort uh, different uh, cells and molecules within the body. And as long as it looks like this, when you can detect virus, bacteria, and cancer cells as enemies and pharmaceutical transplants and other uh, tissues and in cells in, and, and organs, then it is as it should. But if the immune system starts to attack its own cells and organs, then we have a problem. You also see on the down side in the green uh, cells, the regulatory T cells, which plays a very important role in our technology to give a long term tolerogenic infect. We reprogram the cells and uh, instead of getting an attack, you normalize very specifically the immune system to tolerate the cells that have in, in started the immune response uh, to earlier uh, attack these cells. We have a tailor-made uh, uh, technology which means that we're using the patient's own cells. We collect the cells at the patient's home hospital from which we are then sending the monocytes to our GMP facility at which you introduce them to a spe disease specific antigen, the trigger for starting the unwanted immunical response, as well as our patentable tolerance inducer. And this gives together the teledogenic cell therapy, which we treat the patient with. We are thereafter sending back uh, the cells to the hospital at which the patient get treated one to three injection 
every second week. As I mentioned, we have a platform technology for which we have uh, applied for patent. It covers the platform. It covers also the three different uh, projects, IDO8, uh, uh, treatment of patients that have uh, developed uh, in neutralizing antibodies for factor eight, IDO-T, uh, preventing rejection in organ transplantation, and IDO-AID, treatment for autoimmune diseases. In 2019, we took a very important decision, and that was to outsource the manufacturing of the cell therapy for the clinical trial for factor eight, uh, the, the IDO-8 project, which is then covering uh, hemophilia. We made an agreement with Radwood University Medical Center in the Netherlands. They are world leading in manufacturing uh, this kind of treatment based on dendritic cells. And this has been a very big step forward for having uh, cell therapy available for the clinical trial that starts in early next year. The question is, is the market ready for cell therapy? And if we then take around 10 years back and look into the situation at that time. There were early stage, uh, very few patients treated. It was, was ad hoc uh, tools, but also in a stage where a few centers globally was performing this kind of medical treatment. If we look today, we have today commercially launched products and we then take additional 10 years ahead from now. We will see a global manufacturing and distribution of this kind of treatment. We will also see a situa situation where we have processes for also uh, handle this in a lot of hospitals uh, covering the whole world. The trends in the market is, uh, there is a fast development within uh, this area of cell and gene therapy and there is also an increasing pipeline of new products. At the same time, also significant and increased investments in these areas. The innovations is around and within the small and mid-sized uh, companies. At the same time, the resources for commercialization and further development and distribution globally is among the big pharma companies. So the current trend is that the companies, the big pharma named Pfizer, Novartis, Roche, Takeda, Astellas, is looking to acquire companies and projects that will fill their portfolio for the future uh, uh, treatment of these patients with a high medical need. If we look into other uh, stakeholders and what they say about the development of this market, we look at MIT in Boston and they say that they estimate around 15 to 30 cell and gene therapy products uh, that will be launched uh, in the next five years. FDA estimates that they will have approval of 10 to 20 cell and gene therapy products by the year of 2025. And market value for these kind of treatments will estimate to be around 40 billions by 20 US dollar by 2024. Our markets, if you look into the target market and also values of these markets, uh, we are defining uh, IDN's market for our cell therapy to be Europe, North, uh, uh, North America and Japan. And if we look there for, for at, at the left hand side, hemophilia, there is around 120,000 patients globally. Uh, and in this market, we then will have around 56,000 patients with hemophilia A. Around one third of them has developed antibodies, uh, neutralizing, neutralizing antibodies for factor eight. And around 7,000 of them have not any treatment at all for this for the time being. In transplantation, the market is bigger. There we see around 90,000 patients globally uh, transplanted every year. If we look into the market that we are in uh, identifying as target market, it will be around 40,000. And those 
with a living donor, which is the target market for the indication, we will have around 11,000. So hemophilia A is a smaller market, important market with a high medical need. If you look at transplantation, it's a huge market where we also will have the patient transplanted every year. Prior our prioritized projects. Hemophilia A, patient with antibodies. This is a genetic disorder which uh, is a, a, a deficiency in clotting factor 8. And the normal way to treat these patients is to give them uh, coagulation factor 8. Uh, but in 25 to 30 percent of these patients, the immune system attacks and destroys the factor 8 drug by antibodies. And the aim with this treatment is to reprogram the immune system to tolerate factor VIII and then be able to continue the treatment with factor VIII as such. So first the antibodies, then the treatment to create the tolerance for factor VIII and be able to treat with that. Here we are in the late stage of the development project moving into clinical and uh, in the soon future we will hand in the clinical trial application in the second part of 2021 and also aim to start the clinical study first half of 2022. Kidney transplantation, here we use uh, the patient cells and we are loading these patients with the cells from the donor and from that we make uh, the cell therapy and the aim is to get the recipient to tolerate the organ from the donor. Here we are a step after IDO8. Uh, we are now adapting uh, the, the technology, the platform to also fit for IDOT. We are working very close to our advisory board and we are also at the stage where we are working with preclinical data. Looking ahead, we will go the same route as for IDO8. We will prepare for clinical trial application and we will also start the first clinical trial later. Project IDO AID covers a lot of different autoimmune diseases. This is an asset for the company where we see a lot of potential opportunities to have licenses out on our technology platform and have collab collaborations with other partners which is very much into specific disease and can develop these kind of products together with us. Key activities 2021 and 2022. We are very much now working with the preclinical preparations for IDO8. Uh, we have a detailed planning for the clinical study and we are now manufacturing also IDO8. Uh, submission of the clinical trial is prepared now for end this year and study start in the first part of 2022. We are accelerating the IDO-T and we are making the adaptation of the technology we are preparing preclinical studies as well as working close to our advisory board and we are extending uh, our work with business development and partnering discussions as well as looking for EU funding opportunities as a next step. So if we summarize uh, this presentation, we have a well advanced projects with a clear strategy ahead. We have a proprietary technology with patent application that lasts until 2040. Uh, we have a strong partner for high quality, large scale production. Our first clinical trial uh, will start with hemophilia and is close to be up there in early 2022. And we are also looking for partnership for further development, especially for the IDO AID project portfolio. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Anders. And uh, you are now optimizing the production process before initiating the clinical trial with IDO8. Um, can you tell us a bit more about this optimization work? Yes. Uh, when you are developing cell therapy, I mean, you are very much in the front line and you are also working with the patient's own cells. And uh, we very 
close from now uh, or, or in August, we find out that we actually had better data in our own development facilities than we had implemented in our uh, manufacturing process. And then we decided to take one more loop uh, to upgrade the production uh, uh, process. So that is what we're doing now. And we aim to send in the uh, application for clinical trial in December this year. And how do you view, view IDO 8's uh, potential in uh, hemophilia? Uh, the potential is interesting uh, since the standard of care today is factor 8. Uh, and this is, so to say, the standard of care. This is what the clinician wants to give to the patients. We have an opportunity, if successful, uh, to be able to take away the effect of the neutralizing antibodies and then be able to get the patient continuously uh, receive factor eight treatment. So this is uh, an interesting gap to fill, where we today not really have a treatment that can do like that. And where do you see Idogen a year from now? Uh, a year from now, we will be in the middle of a clinical study with uh, Ido8, which is very exciting, I should say. At the same time, we will also be more progressed for the next indication, IDOT, which has a huge potential for the future. So I see a bright future for now. Yeah, it seems that you have an exciting time ahead of you. So uh, thank you for coming here today, Anders. Thank you, Olivia.